All right, so um, I've been working on cranks for a couple days. I've gotten uh, quite a few already done, but I've got a few units, a few pre-units. So when you're pulling your sludge trap, when you want to get the plug out, I use just a big flat blade I can put on a hammer impact. That works the best. Um, most of the time, there's a little peen. I don't know if you can see that. Right there, I will take a die grinder and clean it up. You don't want to take a ton out, but just enough to get rid of what they moved. Once that's all cleaned up, I'll try it a couple times with the hammer, but usually I have to put a little bit of heat into it. Doesn't take a lot, but just enough to kind of loosen everything up and then just start tapping away. And it usually comes out. I broke, you know, probably four or five of these now, but um, yeah, it, it makes the job pretty easy. Sometimes I do have to drill these out and use a, a really big um, extractor, and it, it just takes more time. It's no big deal, but if you're going to do it yourself, it, that's the easiest way to do it but I'll show you how filthy this one is it needed done really badly quite a bit in there but I'm going to get that cleaned out pull the tube out I do have to pull the flywheel on this one flywheel has to come off it's in the way so I can't reach this inner radius here so that's not so bad either I might show you guys that Sub trap is out and cleaned. I pulled the three flywheel bolts and I use these big vice grips to hold it. Acetylene gets it the hottest the fastest. So you want to get this flywheel just super hot as fast as you can so none of it sinks into the actual crank itself. Um, then that gives you enough expansion that should just kind of drop right off. It's kind of easy if you do it right but I know a lot of guys kind of struggle with it sometimes I've done a lot of them so I guess maybe that's why I want to say it's easy but this is obviously the fattest section of the flywheel so the heat needs to really be concentrated through here and then kind of work your way up and around and everything so like I said not too bad just really concentrate that heat into the fattest section and then I kind of just slowly work my way up into these center parts up along here but if you warm this up and then feather around up into here then it's usually not so bad but now that it's off it falls down yeah so like it's not even hot like I can touch this that's the goal is to not transfer any heat because when I first was doing these I was like afraid to use too much and it would all just slowly seep into the crank itself and now it's just as fast as I can that way I'm not using too much heat really it's just enough to get that flywheel to swell and fall but as long as you keep it even it's really not that hard and then now that you've got it at this point I'll try and take it off for you so you can watch.
So the stroke was already set just because I've been doing a ton of triumphs right now and the radius is already correct in the wheel so I don't have to do any of that um, but we are going to center it on this journal and I'm starting with the damaged one so that way I don't waste time on the good one if I can't fix this. So we are going to zero it in and then I'll kind of show you. You might not be able to see that well but we'll see what happens. I don't know. Okay, so I've got the uh, journal I'm starting on centered. So I'll show you here. You can tell, I mean, there's obvious damage to this journal. There's still bearing material left on it, but you can see kind of how that needle's jumping. The X and Y are trued up, so that's pretty much all that matters at this point. So all that movement you see is just kind of all the ugly spots in the journal but you can look there You could probably hear how out of round it was, but I've just got a little bit of it cleaned up so I can have something for my steady rest to press against. But now that that's cleaned up and round, now I'm going to go over to the right side and start in with this journal. Um, I'll probably take this one to 20 just to be safe and make sure I get as clean as possible. There's still some damage there, um, but uh, I think that radius is going to clean up nicely, so that was kind of my biggest concern. Now to the uh, less affected side, and we're going to do that, and I'll come back here in a minute. I don't know how well that's going to show up on camera, but you can see there's a pretty significant lip there. Um, this side is probably around like... 8 under standard, and I'm actually going to 30 on this side, so um, we'll see how this turns out. I just wanted to kind of show you the significant lip there. Okay, so I'm sure I've skipped a couple steps. It's actually a couple days later and I am finished. 
ground it to uh, 40 on both sides actually. Um, I don't remember what I said last, but I got kind of in the zone and then it was the end of the day and now I'm back at it. So I'm gonna show you guys putting the flywheel back on and that's kind of it. Um, there'll be more of these videos later, but uh, just trying to figure out what's worth showing and what's not. When you're putting the flywheel back on, you'll flip it so the timing side is up and then that way you have that relief to put the flywheel back on. Um, other thing to kind of pay attention to with these full width flywheels is these two timing marks. You can kind of see how they're off to one side. Timing marks go on the timing side. Easiest way to remember if you didn't mark the flywheel before it came off, which is always a really good idea. But um, So timing marks, timing side. Take your fat end, put it to the top, swing it over the web and then down and then you can spin it so now you're kind of positioned yourself so now it just needs to pretty much just go straight down um, you want to eyeball the three bolt holes as accurately as you can um, the closer those are the easier your life's going to be when you go to actually uh, position it but it's probably the least fun part. Um, again, same as when you're taking it off, you wanna get heat in this as quick as you can because that's gonna make it so much easier because the more this swells and the crank itself doesn't, the easier it is to manipulate it and move it and you're not gonna ruin your bolts. Um, Okay, so um, that's not permanent. Those are just so uh, I wanted to really make sure everything's aligned. I'll let it cool back down. I'll pull them back out, put a little bit of Loctite on them, send them back in. Then we'll put our sludge tube and plug in there. So um, that's pretty much the gist of flywheel removal and installation. Um, every once in a while, just to reduce the cost of grinding, um, some people will actually do that for me. Um, it's only necessary, like I said, if the edge of the flywheel is in the way of this inner radius. So there's a lot of cranks where I don't have to do that. Um, there's a lot of cranks where I do have to do that. Uh, but if you're more on a budget and you want to save some money when it comes to getting a grind done and you're capable of doing that, it's totally an option. Um, also cleaning them up. Uh, I spend way too much time just trying to degrease some of these because they're so filthy. Um, the sludge and the, I mean the sludge trap itself is always just like a rock in there and then just a layer of baked on nasty black sludge all over the whole thing. It takes me a while to get it cleaned up. So if all I have to do is throw it in my grinder and grind it to the next available undersize, I can cut the cost to the owner by a lot. So just something to consider. Um, I'm gonna be doing some more videos about like the different portions of an engine rebuild because I'd love more people to do engine rebuilds. I'd love to, for them to do them themselves. And so if we can work out a deal where I can help you with the parts you can't do and you can do the rest yourself, that would be awesome. So um, this is probably the end of this video. Um, if there's anything specific you want to see, let me know. Um, I will keep pumping stuff out the best I can. I hope this camera is doing way better than the last one. So new camera, new computer, should be way better quality. But um, like I said, if you want to see something, let me know. I'll try my best to make a video on it, if these are even worth watching.